The September-October 2023 issue of Muzzle Loader Magazine includes an article titled Personalized War Club Calling Cards in which author T.C. Albert shows you how to make a replica war club using a design unique to Native Americans in North America. Curious about this type of weapon, I did some research at the local library and online. A variety of striking weapons were used throughout ancient North America, most of which were designed for warfare. Whilst most of these weapons could be classified as hatchets or clubs, Others, such as the tomahawk, tended to fall into a class of their own. Most impressive of all eastern woodland striking weapons are the magnificent ball-headed clubs, much favored by the Iroquois and Huron, and described as early as 1635. This life-size figure of a tribal chief is on display at the Art Camera Museum in St. Petersburg, Russia. One notable authority on the Iroquois described such clubs as a heavy weapon, two feet or 62 centimeters in length, made of ironwood with a globular head five or six inches in diameter. Other tribes used this design as well. This figure of a sock and fox warrior from the American Midwest is on display at the Field Museum in Chicago. The weapon is visible on the cover art of a 2007 book about these tribes, titled The Black Hawk War of 1832. Not easy to see, but there it is. This club, probably from the Sioux tribe in the 1800s, is on display at the Chateau Ramazé in Montreal, Canada. These clubs are described as coming from the Great Lakes region in the 18th century, now on display at the Quay Branley Museum in Paris, France. This ball-headed club at the top comes from the Chippewa tribe in the Great Lakes region, now on display at the Peabody Museum in Boston, Massachusetts. I like the little carving on top. Is that a lizard? Clubs sometimes included a metal spike, which in my opinion changes it into a completely different weapon. This one comes from the Menominee tribe in the American Midwest, 19th century, now on display in the Brooklyn Museum. This club, on display in New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art, is described as Ball-Headed Club, Western Great Lakes, late 18th century. At once elegant and deadly, ball-headed clubs combine refinement of form with a fearsome efficiency of function. In use for more than two to three hundred years, they were associated with many different American Indian peoples of the Northeast and Great Lakes region. Another example at the Metropolitan Museum is described as War Club, Anishinaabe, probably Ojibwe, Native American, around 1750. This weapon was carved as an effigy of a deer's leg. The sculptor carefully chose the hardwood so that the burled portion, where a branch was once attached, would strengthen the angled head. The ball of this club is tightly clenched in the jaws of an animal, possibly an otter, and feathers were once tied through the hole above the grip to increase the weapon's supernatural power. Highly polished and decorated with red pigment, this club would have been a warrior's prized possession. The website for the Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Indian describes this war club as Ball-headed war club, possibly Anishinaabe, Chippewa, or Ojibwe. Not all ball-headed clubs were made for war. This example from the Museum of Anthropology in the University of British Columbia is described as A club for halibut or sea mammals from Nootka Sound, British Columbia, a chiefly treasure collected on James Cook's third Pacific voyage, 1778. You can purchase an authentic looking replica war club at the Aki Trading Post. The website describes this design as carved with the head of a monstrous creature who holds the spherical striking end in its jaws. 
Such items were considered charged with spiritual power, derived from spirit beings of the watery underworld. You can also purchase replica clubs at Wandering Bull LLC, whose website states, A Native American wood ball club is a traditional weapon used by various indigenous cultures in North America. They designed their clubs for combat and hunting. Native crafters make them from a single piece of hardwood, such as oak, hickory, or maple. They are designed to be sturdy and effective in close combat. Native Americans used wood ball clubs before the arrival of European settlers. They adapted their clubs for use in intertribal conflicts and battles against European colonizers during times of conflict. Let's conclude with a couple of historic pictures of real people showing their favorite traditional gear. This man is Dick King, possibly a Potawatomi chief, from Perry Island, Ontario, Canada, in about 1928. And here are some Native Americans from the New York State Reservation, 1901. In other videos, we'll talk more about the use and some interesting decorations of ball-headed war clubs, plus some historical illustrations of chiefs and warriors holding this unique weapon. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two, and see the description below for a list of books and online resources featured in this video.